Here's Kevin Adams again off the corner of the left side of Jocelyn Tebow. He'll range with it, high to the point. Now looks to send it down. Whoa, puck is there. Back hand shot. Down, Tebow. They score. They score. Time to talk a little CBJ. One of the great radio pros of all time, George Matthews, the voice of the Blue Jackets. I've known Georgie for a long time and uh, learned today that he's that he's stepping away as the team's radio voice after 12 seasons. Georgie, you got Anthony Rothman and Bobby Carpenter here, and I'm um, glad you're able to make the time. This was news that was uh, happy for you, I imagine, very sad for us. Uh, why did this decision uh, happen today? Well, you know what, guys? Uh, it's a tough day. There's no doubt about that. And listening to that call, it was period one and game one for the home opener when I think Bill Davidge and I were doing a broadcast at the title. We thought, uh, Bobby and Anthony, that the Stanley Cup was just uh, months away from coming down <laughs> High Street. But uh, obviously things have changed and the road's a lot longer than, but, uh, than what we initially anticipated. But it's just, uh, guys, and uh, I don't want to get into it too much on the personal side, but uh, for myself here, it's uh, I've been pretty well on my own with my family back on the East Coast for 13 years, if you include the lockout year as well. And, and as you start to get a little older and the, the age starts to climb up a little bit, um, you start to take a look at things differently likewise. And um, I, could, I would have and could have possibly uh, tried to do this job until I was 70 and still be disappointed that I had to leave. But at this particular point, uh, just with my family situation uh i thought it was time uh, to take care of business in the proper way and decided to head back east and hopefully guys i'm going to be able to call perhaps some college hockey back there as well as some some major junior which is a feeding ground for players of uh, such as Derek dorset and and uh Derek Broussard, of course and and jake borchek and those types of players that play out east so um obviously there's only one place to, to be if you really love to, to broadcast the game that's the national hockey league but you got to take other factors into consideration here as well and that uh, is what i've decided to do well, it sounds like at least at Georgia, it's a little bit of the best of both worlds. You get to see your family a little more, move back to the East Coast, but you'll still be involved with the sport, calling some, you know, obviously some uh, collegiate games, some lower level games, and you're still going to be on the horn at all with the CBJ coming up. Yeah, and that uh, Bobby was the was the um, uh, yesterday that was mentioned to me as I went in and talked with Larry Hefner about uh, some of the possibilities uh, getting gone back home for two and a half weeks and talk things over with my family. Uh, the jacket gave me that window to do that, come back here and and make uh, some decisions in what direction that uh, you know my, how we're going to finalize this thing. And uh, yesterday they approached me as well about possibly doing the home opener next season and another perhaps ten or eleven games as well to uh, just sort of blend in a season as well so i'm going to possibly get to the best here both worlds being at home and perhaps doing some some hockey up there that i have to still work on and, and of course being involved with the jackets and one thing guys i really appreciate since being here since day one and seeing the, the network build up to the third largest network in the league and see the fan base as strong as it is there's going to be a huge history for this team and this organization moving forward hopefully with the success that the team will have in the, in the eastern conference and uh you know an opportunity possibly uh to get involved with the alumni as well is something that no matter where i'm from you know where the distance is is how far i'm away doesn't really make a difference well, it allows me to stay in contact with the team and the organization and something that I really appreciate and cherish getting that opportunity. George, let me uh, talking to George Matthews, voice of the Blue Jackets, who's stepping away a full time from the mic after 12 seasons here in town. Uh, let me make sure I heard you correctly. You do plan on calling the home opener for the Blue Jackets? Yeah, I think that's what uh, that hasn't been set in stone yet, depending on, on what potentially uh, I'm, I'm doing out east. But if there's a, an open window there, uh, for myself and for the Jackets, I think that was something that was discussed yesterday. Not necessarily the season opener, but uh, perhaps the home, the home opener for next season and, and perhaps a, a number of other games as well uh, up into Canada and things like that. That was discussed, but uh, Anthony, that really hasn't been finalized yet. Just uh, uh, It's just a matter of trying to work out the schedule of the Jackets and work out the schedule that uh, I potentially could be working on at least as well. So it would be something that uh, I would get, it would be fun to come back and be able to work with Bob and, and uh, to uh, you know cover a few NHL games and still to say hi to people and uh, you know, to reflect back as well of the long history that uh, the Jackets are starting to build up here in this marketplace. We're on with George Matthews, voice of the Columbus Blue Jackets. George, being here for 12, 13 seasons, what I guess, if you had to narrow it down to your most memorable moment, what would you define it as? Uh, Bob, you know, great question, and that's an obvious question. And I don't know whether I can, I can certainly narrow it down to, to just one, you know, one particular scenario. But 
uh, audio that you just used, the opening game uh, here at Nationwide was huge as far as the benchmark game personally and for the for the franchise. Just prior to that, the first game the Jackets ever registered on the sports page as an NHL franchise would be in Pittsburgh in the preseason against the Penguins when Lemieux was out there and Yager and, and uh, Kovalev and those elite, talented players that played a decade longer in the NHL would be certainly one of the highlights as well. The first one in Halifax, or not in Halifax, but in, in Calgary, uh, a 3-2 win. Uh, the uh, third game of the season on the and for the Jackets, their first road game, a game rather was uh, certainly a highlight, and just a, a couple of others. Obviously, would be all the games in the in the Red Wing uh, Jacket playoff series of a few seasons ago. George, uh, when you look at this team going forward, you talked about you know what's happening in the front office and 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 the faith they, that the fan base now has in this organization. It seems like it's at an all time high. Now you just missed the playoffs and that sort of thing and that had to be tough on everybody. But going forward, uh how close do you think they are and where do you think this team will be next season? As close as Lebrowski takes them, Anthony. Mm-hmm. That's gonna be the bottom line. As we can see in Los Angeles last last night, they win a seven game series two to one with Jonathan Quick. Uh, again being a key part of the series. And if Lebrowski plays anywhere as close uh, to what we've seen here in Columbus this past season, the Jackets are going to be they're going to be in a playoff hunt. There's no, I don't have any doubt about that because so much of this team sport uh, evolves around that one position. I mean, you've got a goaltender that showed us this year. Now that, that there's no longevity here to indicate that uh, you know this is going to, uh, to to possibly happen forever. Nobody knows, but in one showing here in one season in Columbus, he's a guy that can he's a 40 to 50 save performer each and every night. And he's a great guy in the dressing room. He's the first guy on the ice. He's the last guy off the ice. He leads by example. He does all the right things. And, um, you know, with that type of goaltending, if he provides that for this franchise moving forward, they're going to be tough to beat. I can tell you, uh, Bobby and, and Anthony, that there's one team that didn't want to see the Jackets make the playoffs this year. We went through uh, uh, San Jose, Minnesota, Anaheim, Los Angeles, Dallas, uh, uh, San Jose, during that stretch of the final six games. Everybody wanted to see... Uh, Columbus get in. They didn't want to see the they, they uh, didn't want to see the Red Wings get in, but certainly there was one other team here, Chicago. They had their eye uh, on the, on the prize here of that eighth and final playoff position. They're one team that didn't want to play Columbus because they believed that with the with the type of goaltending that Sergey Bobrovsky could provide in a seven game series or less, that in fact he could provide a couple of upset wins, and then the pressure goes in the favor very quickly. So. Um, he's the type of guy that can lead this franchise from being a non-playoff team very quickly to be in the hunt for a number of years. Tough to fill your shoes, buddy, but I know Bob McGillicott's going to get that chance, and and we love Bob, and and you've worked with him and that sort of thing, and I know you had a very unique way of calling your games. I'm sure he will as well. Um, Very experienced as well, so you're kind of passing the torch to Bob, huh? Yeah, that's what's going to happen here right now. And, uh, you know, the team will talk about that moving forward here. Uh, you know, Bob's a guy that, uh, you know, he's worked hard in the minor leagues for a number of years with Syracuse, and uh, he's been around the loop in the East Coast League as well. He's like all of us. You've got to pay your dues. Nobody has this thing basically. You just don't walk into this job with no experience. And uh, there's not a broadcaster in the loop that uh, doesn't have some experience and, for the most part, extensive experience of calling NHL games and or at least, uh, you know, hockey. And Bob certainly he's capable of carrying the torch here moving forward. Well, I know we'll get a chance to hear, holy moly, what a goalie, many more times, I hope, and all of your great signature lines. And I wish you the best with your family. I'm glad this decision is coming on your terms and you're doing something that's important to you personally. And, uh, and then you'll, you'll kind of keep your hand in the game without all that heavy lifting. So that's terrific. Thanks, guys. I appreciate, again, being on with you and give me a shout any time. Thanks. George Matthews. Uh, CBJ Radio Pro tells us it's time to head back east to be with his family. He may call the home opener and perhaps several other games along the way. He will still be attached to the Blue Jacket organization, but uh, not as a full-time radio play-by-play man anymore. It was great to have him for the dozen years, and uh, hopefully we'll, 